Hello, I'm finally doing another vlog at last. Uh, it's been a full week since we wrapped uh, filming on block A of A Season in Hell, if you can believe it or not. I'd hoped to do another vlog uh, during the making of the shoot. I only got to do one in the end, at the end of week one. I'd hoped to get at least another one or two done, but it wasn't to be. Uh, so this vlog will catch you up on the last three weeks of the shoot and uh, what we're doing next with film. So, like I said, we've shot for four weeks from August 28th until September 16th. We didn't shoot everything that we were supposed to shoot, but we definitely did shoot a lot. So, while we were shooting, we put an emphasis on the bigger, more dramatic moments and some of the smaller moments that we were due maybe to shoot, we decided not to shoot them and um, to keep our energy and our focus on the bigger moments to ensure that they were done correctly and as well as possible. We found the hard way that do doing roughly two scenes a day was the correct amount of scenes to do well. Um, the average length of those scenes was about three or four pages and doing those, doing two of those a day was a good amount. So eight pages in total a day was probably our average I'd say for dialogue. Um, all the preparation, uh, storyboards, animatics I did, they definitely paid off uh, like crazy. They were a big help and I don't think I would have been able to get the standard that we got without all that preparation that I'd done beforehand. Uh, we definitely had some hard weeks shooting. Um, not hard weeks, not everything was hard. We had a lot of fun shooting as well. Um, as hopefully you can see by the kind of uh, Facebook uh, photos and things we were able to share during the shoot. But um, week three was a hard week. Week three was a hard week. We were out in the woods all week and we were doing a lot of kind of art department stuff in, in terms of the aliens and the guards being attacked and arms being cut off. And um, once you get into that stuff, you have to take it at a slower pace to ensure you do it as well as possible. And uh, I think in scheduling the film... I tried to make room for that stuff so we were lucky a lot of the during a lot of the time of filming we were able to take our time with that stuff and we were also able to go back and do stuff a second time uh, at least once but probably uh, once or twice we went back and did some pickups and reshoots we uh, reshot one whole scene that we shot that was too dark and we also have done lots of pickups of moments um, over the course of the four we shoot as well. I have to say though, everyone in Wexford was super helpful to us though, super sound and uh, we definitely wouldn't have got through with, without them and we really appreciate everyone, everyone who helped us from the catering to the B&Bs uh, to the locations, everyone was just a big help and everyone was very supportive of the film and that carried us a long way, especially during our, our harder days. Um, in terms of the gear we used, that was a little bit trickier, so we shot it all on the black magic camera. Um, and that held together really well. It did a really good job. We shot it on the two lenses, the 12 to 35 and the 25 mil uh, uh, Lumix lens. Um, it would be nice to have some more lenses, but it was it was good just to have those because uh, realistically changing lenses, uh, especially when you're on the gimbal, it just took up a little bit more time. And when you don't have a large camera department, um, it's better to keep things as simple as possible and that's I think what we were good at. We kept things relatively simple. Um, in terms of the lights that was a bit more trickier. We had the Aperture 60D which is shining down on me here still um, and that survived the shoot so well done Aperture. Um, but it was a little bit trickier. I We had uh, 8 NPF batteries that we charge every night and often you put them in at the very start of the morning and the Aperture wouldn't turn on, it wouldn't recognise it. Um, so what we had to find was, you know, if we had brought up the aperture really beyond 60%, we'd come into trouble. So when we were turning the aperture off, we'd have to bring it back down to like 20% and then turn it off. Because if you tried to turn it on, say for example, the next day and it had been left on 80%, obviously turned off. But, you know, if it was left on that setting of 80%, my theory is this is the problem anyway, that when you try and turn it back on at 80%, it couldn't turn it back on. So we'd have to bring it back down to a low percentage, 10 or 15%, then turn it off, and then the next morning it would come on at 10 or 15%, and then bring it back up to 60 or 80%, whatever you ever you needed. So that was a little bit frustrating. And dealing with that, we had to recycle and go through a lot of batteries just to get a few that would work in order for the, the, the light to recognize those, those. So that was a bit frustrating. 
and um, it comes with an American style plug and I never got a an uh, adapter for that I should have but I didn't get around to it so we were relying on batteries for that light all the time um, the Godex uh, was a great light the Godex was a great light and for a great light unfortunately in week three that got some rain the weather was very changeable uh, throughout the whole period the first two weeks were very good but week three the weather was very changeable and that was the week that we did a lot of our uh, outdoor stuff in the woods with the guards being chased by the aliens and some of our art department stuff and unfortunately the godex got some rain uh someday and it just didn't survive it and it hasn't turned on since i don't know whether it's the remote control or whether the light itself um but anyway it hasn't survived it but it did a great job and it was incredibly powerful light and we had no problem with that we had the two batteries for that and they were great but um going out again you know we definitely want to buy a lot more batteries we had eight npf batteries you'd want at least 10 or 12 or 14 maybe of those because i was using them for the camera as well so sharing them between the aperture and the camera wasn't really ideal um and really you'd probably want about four of those batteries uh for the godex those big v mount batteries you'd want at least two more really to make sure you get through the day and maybe i don't know bring out a towel or an umbrella with us next time as well Unfortunately, we weren't as prepared as we could have been for that. Uh, the rod light that we used on the shoot, the um, VL110, that was a very good light. And that used uh, Ulanzi light, VL110. That was a great light and that was a great help to us. And we probably used that every day. <laughs> really, this was in some ways the most reliable light. The aperture just with the issues with the battery. The Godex got rained on, but this never failed us gave this a charge every night it charged uh relatively quickly i don't know probably in an hour or so and it was great as an edge light and we use that probably probably in probably in every single scene there's an example of that how obvious it might be to the eye even to me it might not be that obvious but it was great and it was it was there great as just a bit of separation from the uh, subject to the background uh, so yeah, we are going to fill them more. This is the end of uh, block A. Um, it's been uh, it's been a fun block. I've met a lot of really amazing people, and we've had a lot of great laughs. And I'm very grateful to everyone who worked on the film. Really, I couldn't have done it without them. Um, so yeah, now the plan moving forward is just to pay people the money we owe them for block A, and also be editing the footage that we shot. Um, the stuff that we need to film is, like I said, some smaller stuff with Michael Parle, but also some larger art department moments, and there's at least two big set pieces that we still have to shoot. Uh, but the idea is that as we're editing, we'll also probably, for better or worse, find more moments that we need to shoot as well. And so by the time the new year comes, we'll probably have a nice little shopping list of things we want to do and pick up on. But... um that's the end of this vlog and I thanks for watching um thanks for being interested in the project and we'll hopefully make another vlog soon as the project continues to move forward thank you very much